It's gonna be good. It's gonna be great. Um, it's gonna be great. Yeah, Westy, you told me to be more euphoric. Come on, let's. Well, this is not broadcast. Up. This is you know. Um, oh. Okay. Here, here comes here comes clappy time. Uh, three, two, one. So, okay. So lists of things are pure clickbait, right? It it works, doesn't it? When you when you say like, you know, oh, you mean like the ten things that you can do to be rich? Number four will blow your mind. Yeah, and like that stuff, I know it's clickbait, but it still works on me. I can't, I just can't stop myself. So I thought I'm gonna, I want to get in on that tasty, tasty click action. So this is three point one four three ways to synchronize across documents. I'm actually going to talk about six things, but this is annoyingly far off of pi. Like, it, couldn't you have made it three point one four one? Yeah, well, I, no, no, I decided not to. But I, that, do you know what? I I noticed the, that exact same thing as well, and that did bug me. And I thought, but also I like that you you never use this font. You use this is your clickbait font, I presume. Yeah, yeah, and it's the only time I'm going to be using it in this presentation as well. So enjoy it. Good. Enjoy it right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I use some decimals because I'm not. Uh, of the things that I'm going to show, I'm not sure all of them count as one complete way. So <laughs> I've um, <laughs> I've docked a few points here and there. So okay. Um, well, but, but when doing clickbait, at least do it fairly. Exactly. Yeah, I do have some principles. Some. Uh, so pre be prepared for a shock. Did you know mm -hmm. that you can have multiple tabs open to a page? Dun dun dun. Mm. I know. And it's actually really annoying because whenever you write your service worker update code, that's the case that makes everything a lot harder. Yes. Well, not just that. It's also the overlap between one page refreshing. Um, there's, there's a kind of time when both pages are somewhat alive. Um, or certainly, the request for the new page is going out while you're page. Anyway, topic for another day. Um, the thing I want to talk about is, is page state because well, some state is, is in your page, but some application level state is across those tabs. Um, like log login state, right? You log in in one tab, you would now be expected to be logged in in another tab. But quite frequently, a lot of sites don't do anything about this. No, in... I, I think barely any site. I don't think Google sites do that. Well, that's shame on them, I say. Uh, <laughs> and this is, this is worse for single page apps, because in a multi page app, your next navigation is going to pick it up. Right, so yeah, uh, but in a single page app, it might be around a lot longer. So you, these these differences in state are going to become more and more noticeable uh, the longer two tabs are, are alive. Um, there's also client side state stuff like if you've got a dark mode toggle on your site, like is that per page mm. or is that per yeah. uh, for your application? Um, there's this, so. Remember this when we, when we built the DevSummer website? This. We wrote this. I was really proud of this because this is the one thing I really wanted from any other global event. Um, and so it's a time zone toggle. Like, tell me the times where I am, or tell me the times where the event is. Because you know, if you're going to the event, you want to know, you know, the San Francisco time. When do I have to get up? Exactly. Uh, and if you're watching at home, again. When do I have to get up? It's probably going to be a less sociable time. Or uh, how long do I have to not go to sleep? Yes, that is that was mainly the difference. <laughs> um, so yeah, you, you want if you uh, you know in one tab change the time zone because this is going to be used in multiple pages. You want it to be updated everywhere. Mm -hmm. So how do we do this kind did of stuff? Did we do that? Yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, and didn't I'll know. I'll talk about That's the cool. way I did it as well. <laughs> um, Let's go through a number of different ways of doing stuff like this. Here's number one. Mm -hmm. There you go. Post message. Job done. That's one way of doing it. How do you know your other window? I guess a service worker knows all the windows. But Ah, oh, that's correct. You don't know the other windows, because the only way you'll get one of these is if you have, like, if you do window.open or yeah. if it's an iframe. So I'm going to have to dock a load of points for that, I'm afraid. This is not a proper method, is it? <laughs> it's an eighth of a method, apparently. Yeah, well, yeah. But also, like, it has, it has some good parts. Like, you can, uh, the stuff you can transfer, it, it can be not just like string data, not even just JSON data. It can be like binary data, blobs. 
Uh, you can have circular references in your objects. It's a structure clonable, so it, it supports all of that. Have you have you heard of Comlink? Yes, and I'm sure Comlink uh, can help here as well. <laughs> and I should say that this is the only method we're going to look at here that actually works cross origin. So I'm actually going to give it some points back for that. So it has sort of specific use cases, but not like you said, not generally useful. Like there's the, the it's good at what it does specifically, but for keeping state across a whole app, uh, it's just point two four eight of a way. Um, I would say I, I don't have time to go through the very complicated and scientific scoring system I'm, I'm going to be using here. But just trust me that it is. Like, just trust you that this is absolutely deeply thought out and completely accurate. Absolutely, absolutely. If I did the same test again, the same numbers would come out. I've not just picked these out of my, like, how dare you? How, how very dare you even suggest? <laughs> you picked them out of your what, Jake? Where did you pick them? <laughs> All right, let's leave that behind. Next one. This is event source. Uh, so this is a persistent server connection. There's other ways of doing this. You could use fetch, um, fetch streams. Have you heard of them? Um, but uh, that doesn't work in Edge, uh, annoyingly. Well, old Edge, sorry, the old Edge engine. And there's WebSockets as well. You need a server. That's. I mean, come on. This is. This needs a server. And this needs a server. Um, so yeah, that's. Don't like it. Don't like it. Well, it's, and do you know what? You're right because if you've got eight tabs open, that's now eight connections you're keeping yeah. and the same data being sent to you eight times. So I'm sorry, going to have to dock some points for that. That's no good, is it? But it does mean you can communicate cross device, which is pretty good. Like, How do you know that the that event sources are coming from the same client on the server side um, reliably? Well, you, you cookies. So using cookies, you'll right. have state, you'll know the login. Um, Fine. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you don't need that. Like, I, I don't know. I find it really satisfying if I close an issue or merge an issue on GitHub uh, on my phone and I see it happen on the screen as well. It's like, Ooh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Right. That, but that's public. OK, I was still thinking in like the time zone thing, which is an inherently personal adjustment, while something like an issue that's glo quote unquote global state. So that makes sense. Yeah. OK. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, so I'm actually going to give it a few points back because it, it's useful for you, know, you can do some smart cross device stuff. But yeah, it's very specific. And yeah, it, it's a shame that we don't really have a way right now to sensibly dedupe um, like a connection. Like if you, so if, if, you're, if you're trying to do that, you know, you've got eight tabs open, you kind of want one to be the main tab and then do a different method of communication to give that information to the other tabs. Shared worker is a great way of doing this, but it's not well supported. I was waiting if I should. If I can bring up Shadow Worker, if you have it in here, because that that is the thing that I wanted to use for my actor model stuff as well, but it's so horribly badly supported that it's just not a realistic option. I I just I literally just thought of another thing you can use for this. Um, the Weblocks API, you could have one thing set up a connection and create a weblock, and then the other tabs will will wait on that weblock to expire before they try and uh, do it. I don't know. There's probably some race conditions in there. Anyway. Anyway, I haven't thought about it properly, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore for fear of embarrassing myself. Here's another one. Uh, this is like when you change local storage or session storage, all the other windows, they get this event. Um, I did not know this. This is, I think this is really cool because you get the old file, the yeah. new file. You even get the URL of the page which made the change. Can local storage store objects? No, uh, it can't. Uh. Uh, just text data, so I'm going to dock some points for that reason. But it's fine for small bits of data. You could also use it, and I've done this before, use it as a signal um, just to say this yeah. thing's changed. Even though the data is actually somewhere like uh, somewhere else, like IndexedDB or Cache API, I can use uh, yeah, just I a little. Yeah, I think this would have been useful for my actor model thing, because what we ended up doing is using IDB and polling it. Ah, polling ooh. is the word, polling, polling, polling. Yeah, but, still. Um, yeah. Oof, that's that's harsh. Yeah. So one reason you might not have used it in your actor model is it only works in a window, not a worker, because local storage, right? So. Yep, that would make it a no non-starter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's dock some more points for that. Um, although that hasn't been a, a problem in practice for me where I've used this in the past. This is actually how I did the time zone change because it was only ever a, uh, reflected in a in a page. That makes a lot of sense to me. So I used it for yeah. that, and it was dead simple. If you're only dealing with dedicated workers, you could have the the page here, this event, and then post message the worker. Whatever. Whatever. True. But my main problem with this is it only alerts other windows to the changes. 
uh, which is a, a little bit of a pain. So in this case, I've got another component on my page and it's listening mm -hmm. for this event as well. But if the other component updates a value, my component's not going to hear about it because it's only going to tell other windows. Oh, it doesn't. You don't get an event on your own window. OK. Exactly. Yeah, that's annoying. That is annoying. Yes, that's a problem. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to dock some more points. It's I mean, it's still really useful. But I'm going to say this is like 0.763 of a, of a method due to, uh, according to my calculations. OK, let's keep going. Broadcast channel. Ah. Uh. Love it. Love if it. If it was real. Yes, it is real. This is real. You can use this today. <laughs> um, Barely. <laughs> it's, oh, so, but one of the nice things about this is like it's you know structured cloning, which is great. Uh, mm -hmm. It works in workers, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know all different kinds of objects and whatever. But also, it will message other channels on the same page. It won't message itself but it will message any other channels of the same name. So you don't have that problem uh, that I showed before. It, it just works around that, which is really nice. But, and I think you were slightly alluding to this, it's not supported in Safari, is it? It's not. And that's the only modern browser that doesn't support it. Uh, we, yep. Chrome was late to the party with this. Like It was in Firefox for a while before it reached Chrome. But, True. But we've had it for a few years now. And it, this, this is like top of my list of things I really want in Safari. Because it's just, yeah. Anyway, anyway, I'm not over it, but you know, we'll move past <laughs> no it for way. now. Service worker. So this listens for events that are sent by the the service worker to other clients. Uh, so this works in workers. It's structured cloning again, uh, a little bit more complicated because you have to do things manually when it comes to sending. So yeah, the service worker side is a bit convoluted as well. Yeah. So here I, I'm post messaging to the service worker to say, hey, please broadcast this for me, uh, and then the service worker is going to pick up that event and then broadcast it back. This is useful in the multi-component case as well, because you get to decide whether it posts back to the, the same client. And I tend to. I always post back to the main client. In fact, I use that as my source of truth. Like One component will send the data uh, to the service worker, but then it won't apply that data change until it hears back uh, about it. And that works in a, in a multi-component like web components case. So. But yeah, you know, that's that's preference. You get to do get to do whatever you want. So that's one way of doing it. Um, and I'm actually going to leave that at one because that's my favorite method when I need all of those features. And the the, the post message sending something to the service worker will wake it up in case it's been killed, and it will have always a correct and complete list of all the clients, right? Yes. Yeah. When you call match clients, that's when it will go and, and get all of those. Uh, by default, it's only controlled clients, but there's an option to say give me the uncontrolled ones as well. By default, it's only pages, but there's another option where you say, and I want the workers as well. So like, that's kind of, yeah, that's all in your control and up to you. One last one. Here we go. Ooh, look at this. This is. Are they finally a thing? An IDB observer. Yes. So you create a callback, and then you say what you want to observe. Works in workers. You get the complex type because it's all of the IDB stuff. It has everything, uh, you know, so you can just use your index DB as like the central store for your state, and then just your components can listen for when the bit they care about actually changes. So it's a way for and it's not supported. It's just a, <laughs> it's just an explainer. It's a, I think there's a partial experimental implementation in Chrome, but like and worse, this explainer hasn't been touched in 2017, like. Oh, this is a lot of years in web years. You, you, you got me hopeful there for a second. I know. I, I knew they were working on it, and I was like, "Is it? Is it happening? Is, are they a thing?" I just wanted to play with your emotions it. a bit there, because yeah, but uh, it's fair to say that we both that's... really want this, right? This, yes. this is what this is how we want to build apps. We want to be able to store all of the data in IndexedDB, uh, and then use observers to you know. So one component's like, I only care about this bit. I only care when this thing changes. So just let me let me know. Yeah, imagine if you could put your Redux state into IDB and have all the other components just subscribe to it via IDB Observer. And if the page reloads, it doesn't matter. All the state is still there. It's like it would be so many things I wanted to try if they are actually feasible. Actually, I would love to also Alice. have a session index DB store as well. Yeah. So a way that you would say like, I want this, but just for this tab. Um, and if this tab closes, Agreed. I can get rid of the data. And that also means like, um, uh, depends again. 
depends who you ask whether this is the spec behavior or not. Uh, session storage, uh, in some cases, survives a tab crash. So tab crashes, reload, and you, you know, you, you've only lost whatever happened before your, your last uh, commit to IDB, which is yeah. great as well, right? So yes. yeah, I know I'm not, I'm ending on a sad, sad story. On a point zero zero five. That's all I've got. Uh, hopefully one day we get this, but in the meantime, yeah, I think the, the, the service work now, away. Now I'm thinking, do your numbers actually add up to 3.145? I hope so. 3.143. I hope so, because I sort of panic added it up at the end, but it is entirely possible I missed. <laughs> but you did at least add them up. Maybe, I, I, if it was me, I probably would have just written math.random on every slide here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely attempted to add them up, whether I got it right or not. Uh, I'm, do you know what? I reckon we'll hear about that in the comments. Oh, yeah, we will. And you will get you get told off if it's not correct. Uh, it's It's all I deserve. Just one second, because I'm really worried because my fan went off during that episode. So I'm, I just want to double check that everything actually recorded. I'm not, I don't have any error messages. And I have 17 minutes of recording. Yeah, 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 it's all recorded. Thank Christ for that.